Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Welcome everybody to another episode of Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and Oh, really? Hot off the press. It still doesn't feel right without Matt. I know, it's just, but you know what? Skillfully flipped. Yes, indeed. By the one indeed. and only, yeah. Mr. P. Collins. What's going on, Pete? Yeah. How's it going, RC? Good. Good, man. It's kind of a crazy day. We're live. We are live. actually live. So this is episode 296. Um, it's the first episode that we're doing live. So we're actually streaming this. If you want to watch, you can watch on kbtv.com forward slash on air. Chances are you probably are watching that now. If you're watching so it now, yeah, exactly. People are gonna start typing, and they're like, "Wait a minute, it's it's the same." I'm here. Thing. Yes. <laughs> Stop. No. But um, but yeah. If so, we're gonna start doing these episodes live, and as we're canning, and we we figured it probably would just be a good way for us to give some people who are dedicated on the web to do a sneak peek, as well as kind of make it a lot easier for us to let you in our lives. Ah. Yeah, because we know a lot of people like the behind the scenes stuff. Plus. What a lot of people don't realize is we usually film two in a row, mm -hmm. and so you're going to be able to sit here and see two hours, well, not two hours, we don't go an hour on each one, but two episodes, two episodes. right now, live, or you can wait and see them as we rebroadcast them. Mm. The first episode will rebroadcast today, mm -hmm. and yes. the next week will be the second one. Next week, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, very, very cool. So every other week we'll be live to you guys. Right. So it'll be pretty good. Now, on my left, we have the incomparable and the guy that I'm using for the book for the book giveaway, Mr. Corey. Ah, hello. What's going on, man? What's up? Hey, uh, so on? this is what we did, right? So on Google+, Plus, uh, something else that you're gonna see, right? Right before we start doing a live taping, we'll start asking you guys for questions. Keep in mind, this is your show. So if you go to, let's say, rcgplus.com, or you go to coreygplus.com, or mm -hmm. bgplus.com, we'll start letting you know when we're doing these episodes, and we ask for your information. Is there a problem? Is there something that you need answered? Mm -hmm. Let us know, and we'll go ahead and we'll pick a prize. So I did that, and I gave away your Photoshop Down and Dirty Tricks with Designers. I appreciate it. Thank you. So it was nice. A phenomenal book. Yes. Phenomenal. I think everybody needs to have. I like to think so. I, I think it's one. <laughs> it's one of those things where I have to give a lot of credit. It's really, really good. All right, uh, thank but you. Uh, that takes care of most of the housekeeping stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and actually show you guys something in Lightroom. You got a tip for us? Yes. Right. All right. Take so a look at this. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you a question. Is sure. it wrong that I'm enjoying watching myself? while I'm doing this because oh. there's a delay I can do something here and then wait and see only if you here. admit it like that yes. okay yeah if you yeah. make it public like that then yes there's probably a problem here I go here I go yes <laughs> now okay. just just as a note you might notice Pete might act a little differently today <laughs> because we have a very special guest sitting not 20 feet away his father is here yeah uh -huh. my dad so, yeah. and my stepmother walked in Hey, Dad. Hey, Melody. <laughs> Came in. So I'm going to act a little more proper today. I might actually know what I'm doing today, or not. He'll act like he's sedated yes. at this point. He'll be like, well, yes. And then we also have some other studio. We have other studio members here. We even have uh, Dave Leatherwood, who's a NAT member mm -hmm. here. So very, very nervous. We actually have a live audience, and we're streaming live. I know. We're it's live. crazy. It's too much live. Way live. <laughs> All right. Speaking anyway, of live, take show us what you got. All right, and this is just a quick tip inside of Lightroom. We have, when you're looking at cells inside of Lightroom, what you want to do is you want to quickly find a way to find the one that you've worked on, find the one that has any kind of modification that's been done to it. Mm. And a lot of the times, I like leaving my cells very, very clear so that I can kind of quickly scan through all of the stuff. But if I need to make a quick selection of most of this, what I'll do is I'll just hit the letter J, and what that does is it toggles these little icons. The little icons, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see them. You'll see that there's a little pen icon. If you hover over it, it'll tell you that the photo has keywords. If you click right on that icon, that can go ahead and bring you to a specific context sensitive tool. So you'll see, for example, clicking on that brought me over to the keyword. Now, if you come over here, you'll see that this one, if you hover over it, it tells you that the photo's been cropped. If you click on that, it'll automatically bring you into the crop. Hmm. Now, if you continue to do that, you can actually control which of those icons you see there. If you do a Command J, you have a whole bunch of different things that you can show right in that one area. So, 
I can go ahead and turn off my grid extras, turn them on, or see expanded cells so that that gives you the file name and the dimensions right at the very, very top. But it's a great way for you to select different things. Like here, I'll show you the last one here. Right? Here's an exposure change. So automatically, rather than just uh, going, well, which one was edited, which one was modified, how were they modified, this gives you a very, very quick way for you to find out where these images are. Also, if you go, go over to the catalog view, so I'm gonna have the same images set up. You'll notice that in all photographs right now, if I were to zoom in, I get an extra one. The extra one that I get is this one. That's my favorite one. This one lets me know when a photo is in a specific collection. So a lot of the times I like to organize everything from a collection standpoint. Click on that, it'll tell you which collection it's on. All you have to do is just select and it brings you right back into the collection that you need. That's nice. So a couple of things to kind of move around and figure out what it is that you want to do. Compelling indeed. That's great. Great. <laughs> what do you got? You got something in Photoshop? Yeah. Well, one of the things, I have a couple of thing, go-to uh, little tips, tricks that I like to do, and then one that catches me all the time until I had to wrap my head around why it was always messing me up. First thing I like to do that a lot of people forget that I forget when you're getting your, your brush tool or any of these tools like this, and if you want to change the size of it, you just simply hit your right bracket to make it bigger and your left bracket to make it smaller. And I could remember that, but a lot of times I'd want to change the hardness or softness of it. Mm -hmm. And I would forget that all I would need to do is hold my shift button and that would change the hardness and softness of it. Let me bring up one that shows it a little bit better. So this one is, is a fairly hard bristle brush, but if I start hitting that left bracket, you see it drops down a little bit, and now it's gonna paint with a softer edge nice. than what I had before. And that's the one I forget. I, I, realize, I remember to, to raise and lower it, but I forget about making the softness and the hardness. And for people who like to use brushes a lot, that's a real quick tip that can speed up your process. Uh, the second thing that I find myself always messing up on, let me do this, let me paint something right here. I'm just gonna use that brush, because it was easy. And I'm going to, yeah, that's nice. I don't want that brush. It's just It's a, just wanting a to do the one dot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try something that actually paints. Okay, I've obviously got something going on that it only wants me to put a couple, so I can fix that. I'll just take that. Your, okay. Your, your subject matter is compelling as well. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes. It's Corey here with his new book um, that we're giving away. But the thing is, oftentimes I want to take that particular thing, whatever layer it is, and I want to shift it through the different, scroll it through the different blending modes. Ah, okay. And so what happens is I know the shortcut for that is shift plus or minus to go through the different blending modes. But here I go and I start hitting shift plus and nothing happens. Shift minus, I can't figure out what's going on. And it used to drive me crazy. And then I realized that you have to have the move tool to be able to use this. I, for some reason, it wants to be on the move tool selection for this to work. Now if I do my shift plus, it'll scroll, scroll through all the blending modes. You know, and it's nothing exciting, but that's what it'll do. And you can see how they're going to react with the layers beneath them. Or you can back up by hitting shift and minus. Use that and, shortcut all the time. And that's the one little shortcut, that little, little caveat to that tool that you forget is you have to have it on the move tool for it to work. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen is I'll think, oh, I've got, uh, you know, hidden marching ants. I've got a selection I've got to go find. And I start wiggling around trying to figure out why the blending mode's not working and it's simply because I don't have it on the move tool. And you know what it does for that, which is actually even worse? One of the things that I noticed is if you're editing something, now if you go back to your brush tool, so Pete, go ahead and hit the letter B, right? So yep, you hit the letter brush B, you tool. go to the brush tool and you start brushing, and you're like, things are messed up. The brush isn't behaving the way that it's supposed to. Take a look at your blend yep. mode up top. When you did a shift plus or minus, what it was doing is it was changing the blend mode for the brush and the tool right. option, mm -hmm. yep. rather than the blend mode for the layer, so you, you're looking at the layer, you're looking at the blend modes, they don't move, but they're moving over right. in the blend mode for the brush. So when you go back to use the blend mode for the brush, it doesn't work right. It yep. doesn't work either. So it's context sensitive. So that's one of the, as soon as yeah, you, you were watching out, it up there, I watched it. <laughs> you're going clear. This good. isn't, any, I'm not bringing you like an enlightened moment of, well, apparently you don't know. I like, I only noticed it when Pete just did it. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, that's look what's what it's going yep. Those sticky features and, are even and more that's so on, how, on That's Windows. how you figure these things out. Yeah. That's Do right. I, 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 those sticky features are even more so on Windows because I've always gotten frustrated with, you know, you'll be, you have your cursor somewhere and everything. You just don't, you, you just don't know where it is. Right. So. 
Okay, and the final thing that uh, I just like to bring everybody a refresher on is let's say we've got this text down here, and I chose a wonderful text. Let me bring it back up here. Corey Barker gets down and dirty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we open up our character palette, the thing that I like to do oftentimes when I'm trying to choose a font is to look at them visually. And if you're like me, you've got a whole list of fonts. Okay. Well, the easiest thing to do is just to click into that in the character palette, just click into it, and now I can scroll through by using my up and down arrow keys. And a lot of people forget that, and that is one of the best tools that I can use when I'm trying to lay out fonts and whatnot, because I'm a visual person. I wanna see how it looks, so I can just scroll through using my arrow keys. But you have to make sure you click onto that menu, the name up in the menu, and then you can use your up and down arrow keys to scroll through quite easily and find a font that matches whatever image you're using. Perfect. Not and so those bad. are three quick little things that catch me or help me. Nice. Very, very cool. Lovely. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got your tutorial. Yep. We've yep. got the contest and a bunch of other stuff. So stick around. No, I'm not happy. Hi folks, we are back. So before we get into, uh, I have a feature tutorial that I'm gonna get started with in a moment, but before we talk about that, let's talk about the big event. What we just saw. Just saw a promo. Photoshop World is coming in, well, in just what, a month, God, a little over a month it, now. Phew. Too fast. March 24th to the 26th in D.C. Uh, we're going to be there. At the Walter E. Washington Convention Center in Washington, D.C. I always have to look, <laughs> which is horrible. It's just like, I'm going to be there in a month. And I'm like, yes, Photoshop World is on the... Yes, and it's at the, no. 24th to the 26th. But um, we, we just close our eyes and hope we live long enough to get there. Yes. Now, the now of course, at this do. point, um, the early bird has passed. So back just to the administration. The but also another feature is the... Free Expo Pass is available now on the site. You can go there, uh, be open to the public on the 25th and 26th. You can go to the site, register, get a free pass, and you can check out the Expo at very least. There's a now, lot of great stuff. Expo, in there. What, like, why would anybody want to go to the Expo? Why would anybody want to go to the Expo? Right. Not There's only. <laughs> Right? Dun, dun, dun. Just, I turn around and I try to feed him, and I'm like, why would anybody go? And he's like, You yeah. kind of threw me off there. I was dude, just like, Why would they want to go? I'm like, no. Dude. <laughs> but here's so you have a whole bunch of vendors that are there, right? So you can geek out on a whole bunch of stuff. But there's a ton of classes that actually happen have, right on the mm -hmm. trade floor. So I'm, we all teach classes mm -hmm. right on the trade show floor. We have live shows that happen there. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of the instructors that teach for Photoshop World, mm -hmm. you know, like Doug Saunders and Jeremy Coward and Moose Peterson and all these people are use that as a hub to mingle and a place where they share classes and we give lighting booths. Like I do usually do demos at like at Wacom and I'll do something at mm -hmm. Proto and Precisely, yeah. there's all of these different places. So a lot of the times I, I've run into more and more Photoshop people that go to the expo and learn just a ton at the expo. So it's one of those things where you get to go for free and mm -hmm. if you're in the area, you can do education and product and network and do all of that stuff. 
for, for nothing. When you think about it, as an instructor, when you get through with teaching your classes, you want to go somewhere that you can be part of the action, and that's at the expo floor. So you're going to run into all the instructors. It's always you're the centerpiece see, of yeah, the event. Yeah, absolutely. That, they've got booths that you can take pictures, check out new equipment. It's mm -hmm. just it's just a phenomenal place to go. So. Yeah, not and portfolio reviews as well. Portfolio reviews, Photoshop okay. Wars, Photoshop okay. Wars. Yeah, so there can be a ton of stuff. A whole bunch yep. of stuff. So. All right. You have a tutorial I in Photoshop. Do. Ones and zeros. Ones and zeros. I've got um, kind of an interesting composite. And this is actually, uh, again, playing around. And this is something I've always talked about on Planet and other tutorials I do is I'm always picking apart images. Everybody takes a photo. They look at the whole picture here. And I'm always looking at pieces of it. And kind of stumbled upon this uh, by mistake. And it just kind of blossomed into something pretty cool. So it does have this generic pattern of um, binary code. And look, oh, there's a little two in there to throw things off. Yes. Yes. No. So. Just found this on, um, actually this says uh, Photolia, I actually found this on, so it's just a generic background. I have a whole host of uh, background images that I keep for various reasons. So I'm going to go over to the channels, actually, and just toggle through my red, green, and blue. I see the green channel. I like that one. It's nice and bright, so I'm actually going to load that as a selection. Just command or control click directly on the channel um, preview. Create a new alpha channel here, and then just fill that with white. So basically just make, you know, I guess I could have just copied the channel, too. Could have made a copy of the channel. There's, two, there's several ways to do it. I'm so disappointed in you. So, <laughs> thank you, Pete. I'm going to tell your father. <laughs> He's All right. right there. Be I'm careful. Not. Oh, he is. So. He will cut you. He doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> he said Photoshop, so, and he fell asleep. So I'm actually going to just boost the contrast of this a little bit with some levels and get a little bit more, less of a glow going on in there. But here's the thing. I was thinking, what can I do? When I started experimenting with this, I'm thinking, what can I do with this, with this entire graphic? And I'm thinking, too big. I, don't mm -hmm. I was like, why don't I just take a piece of it? So what I did was I just drew an oval selection around a grouping of the numbers here. Let's do something like that. Are you going to take a bit of the binary? Yes, just Ooh. a bit. You went there, didn't yes, you? I yes, I did. Yes, Pete went there. All right, and I'm just going to blur it. I'm putting it in quick mask mode so I can visually blur it and see exactly how soft uh, the selection is going to be. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Do about, about let's do about a 10 pixel blur, it'll be fine. Now you went over that pretty quick, but tell them what the difference is, why you do that. Well, because the marching ants, really, you know, the marching ants isn't really how Photoshop sees selections. It's just a visual aid there for you as the user. What, po what Photoshop sees are pixels. When you go to quick mask mode by changing, by pressing the Q, it puts you in visual mode. It's just a visual color overlay showing you what uh, pixels are active and which ones are not. Uh -huh. And that's basically what a selection is in Photoshop. So I'm back in my selection. I'm just going to inverse it by going under Select and choose Inverse, and then press Option Delete. And that will fill the background with black, leaving just the, oval, the area I had in the selection. So now, back to my layers. I'm going to have, I have a new layer here. It's with, filled with black to the background element here a new blank layer, and then I'm going to go to Select, Load Selection, and we're going to load that alpha channel I created. There it is right there. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with white. Now, here is where a very old friend of mine comes in, came in really handy, the warp tool. Remember how nuts I was over the warp tool? <laughs> oh, God, Way back yeah. When? You so, were warpy for a long time. So as I was playing with this, uh, this graphic, it, it really uh, turned into something pretty cool. So I'm going to put it in free transform by pressing Command or Control T. And then I'm going to hold down the control key on Mac or just right click on it and go into the pop-up menu and choose warp. And it assigns a warp grid in a sense. I'm actually going to scale it up a little bit more and then go back into warp. So it assigns that oh, um, warping grid. So I'm just going to grab the corner handles and just start to warp this graphic. And you can actually grab the corner handles or these Bezier curve handles and manipulate it. You can also click inside the grid and ma ma manipulate it that way as well. Does it bother you that he says Bezier so easily? Yeah, it just comes to him naturally. So, uh, you know, and I was just pushing the uh, graphic around until I got kind of an interesting configuration, something like that. And it's already looking much more interesting yeah. than just a flat oh, yeah. field of, of numbers. So then I, then I thought, why stop there? So I added an outer glow layer style. And let's give it kind of a blue glow to it, increase the size a little bit. Ooh. See, and, and this is one of the reasons, like, and, and just, just to kind of pull back, this is pretty much what we do when we're in the office and Corey's working. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times we're just like this. 
Wow. I was, but how did he do that? Well, and because that's what happens is a lot of the times I think that we get, like, I'm, I come from a photography and a web stand mm -hmm. So I'm looking at everything like picture, edit, adjust, put it on the web. Mm -hmm. But you could learn so much by just kind of sitting around and just playing with it. Like, mm -hmm. my mind is like blown because I'm sitting there going, oh man, I could totally do something for but, X right, with this. And I'm not done yet. Oh, mm -hmm. God. I Don't thought, spoil it. I thought, why well, stop there? I thought, well, what, what could I, what, this almost looks like an ad or something like that. But then I was thinking, I had this cool image of this smart car. <laughs> and well, I thought, that's oh. kind of, uh... you know, it's smart, it's binary code, it's nerdy. It's everything a smart car is. <laughs> so, it obviously looks like this shot was taken outside. Yep, anyway, right. So I want to kind of give it an element of an indoor look. So here's a cool, quick trick. Make a duplicate of the layer and then desaturate it. Go under image, adjustments, desaturate. Then I'm going to press Command or Control U, and that brings up hue saturation. So I'm going to colorize this image with a similar blue cast that the background graphic has. And then change the blend mode to soft light. And you can see it gives me a blue cast, <laughs> making it seem like it fits in the scene that much more. Now, last made, element here. You made a pact with the devil early in your life, didn't you? <laughs> One last element here. I'm just going to take an oval selection, and let's put it on a new layer. Fill it with white. I want to have like a glow that this, uh, like this uh, car is actually sitting on. Let's blur it like crazy. Not with a lens blur. <laughs> yeah, Mike, that's something like. And we'll do about a 25 pixel blur here, nice and big. And uh, that layer style I put on that uh, background graphic, mm -hmm. just, just hold down the option key and just grab that effects icon and go boom. Nice. And then we'll just drop the opacity a little bit. Maybe even, you know what, this is what happens. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was like a skew or a warp that was coming into skew it. Skew that a little bit. Oh, one last trick. I'm going to load a selection of the shape of the car and make another new layer and fill it with black. Watch this, instant shadow. Oh, get out. <laughs> oh, literally, like, dude, get out. <laughs> and then just <laughs> soften it up with another blur here. Let's do about a 10 pixel blur there. And voila. You're going to stop there? Really? Yes. Don't I have job. to. Nice job. We are running out of time. We have no, to. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. We'll do the contest. We'll do the prize. We'll do all of that stuff. I'm just going to sit here and just geek out on this car. <laughs> so stick around. We'll be right back. My name's Tim Wallace. I work as a commercial photographer. I'm based in the UK. Cars fascinate me. They're almost like people. They're like characters. They have a personality. Photography is about creating one single image that gets that message across. It doesn't matter what the shoot is. The finished image is in my head before I even start. Just look at the whole aspect of just light and creating a mood and creating something different. I like people to look at it and be inspired. It's up to me to create an image that makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and think, I want to be that person next to that car. So my name's Tim Wallace. Come and check out my courses on Inspired Light and Automotive Photography at kelbytraining.com. Composition. What is it? Does this work? What about this? Leading lines, rule of odds, the rule of thirds. Viewpoint, patterns, contrast, balance. Dead center is deadly. I'm Rick Salmon. I really hope you can join me for my latest class on Kelby Training, Composition, the strongest way of seeing. I'll show you how to compose technically as well as emotionally. Oh, well, and there we go. Thank you, RC. That was great. I appreciate that. Coming back in, saying, hey, we appreciate y'all coming and checking us out live. And uh, if you're seeing us in the rebroadcast, sorry about that. It was astounding to be here live with you. Guys, we're, we're going to give away some stuff right now. Okay. Do we have to? Yes. Well, okay. according to the bylines in our contract, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what have we got to give away? All right. Uh, I have a whole bunch of stuff from On One. Thank you, On One, for donating most of this stuff. OnOneSoftware.com. Now, we have... 
photo frame. Let's put frames around pictures. Perfect portrait. Perfect mask. Perfect effects. Perfect resize. Perfect. I wish I wouldn't give this one away. I know. <laughs> if there's one piece of software that I go to all the time, it's perfect resize. So we're going to give all of that away to one person. And what else? Let's give away Matt's book. There's more. So Matt's you, compositing book. Phenomenal book. Phenomenal um, book. Everybody's so, running around talking about this book as being like mm -hmm. the book for digital compositing. Right. Yeah, since Matt's not here, we'll, we'll be able to talk openly okay. about it. Talk it is a really great big, book. No, no, fantastic. And I'm in it too. I know. Uh, he's pulled together stuff to show you how to light it how to put it together, how to use the blending modes, the selections, mm -hmm. to create your own great eye-popping, jaw-dropping compositions. And what happens with that is that a lot of the times people think of compositions, and, all, and, and if you're a photographer, you start thinking like Dave Hill, you start thinking like all these like super effects, mm -hmm. like I wanna fly down by perfect. I wanna fly around this mountain to do this and to do that. But he also covers very, very essential things, like a lot, things. these are the kinds of things that you're gonna wanna do mm. when you're doing composites as well. So it's not just special effects, but it's real practical marketing. You could take this, learn from this book, and actually turn this as, into a business. Oh yeah, there's, especially there's for like there. family portraits when Aunt May can't be there, learning how to take the shots to put her in, or you're doing commercial mm. shots, the doctors, you can never get all the doctors together, how to how to light it, shoot it, so that you can put them all together seamlessly. Nice. Let's throw one more thing in, sweeten the pot. How about a pass Photoshop World? Ooh, Photoshop okay. World Pass. Photoshop World Pass. A Photoshop World Pass, you're gonna be all hooked up. Now, yes. how, do, how do you do this? Keep in mind, you're probably watching this from a whole bunch of different places. You could be watching this live, you could be watching this on Google+, you could be watching this on YouTube, but we can only pick from one spot. So go to kelbytv.com forward slash Photoshop user TV. Uh, this episode, look for this episode, and in the comments for this episode, just leave us a comment. Tell us a positive, tell us a negative, give us a show idea. Say hey Anyone to my dad. Please. Say hey, 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 hey to, to your dad. His name is Pete Collins, hard to remember. So say hey to Pete Collins. Be like, hey Pete Collins. And one of you guys <laughs> will win this bounty of prizes. But Most anyway, indeed. I think it pretty much wraps us up for today. Does it? That's it. I think we're pretty much done. So on behalf of myself, Mr. Pete Collins. You're not Pete Collins. Oh, myself. You mean Pete that, Collins. You mean that Mr. Hey, Pete Collins or this Mr. <laughs> yeah, and, and Mr. Pete Collins and our <laughs> studio audience. And Corey Barker. Thank you very much. We will see you guys next week or in about five in about minutes. Five minutes, yes. <laughs> On the next Photoshop User TV. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye.